Father Jonathan Meyer, and it is a great joy to help you through this program to enter deeper into our Sunday readings. We celebrate this weekend Corpus Christi, in Latin, Corpus Body Christi Christ, the body of Christ. This weekend we celebrate the fact that the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus is present at every single Mass and in every tabernacle of the world in the smallest crumb, fragment, or drop of precious blood, our God is present. Our country also begins what is known as our Eucharistic Revival, a national program where we are going to, for the next three years, emphasize our Lord's true presence in the, in the Most Blessed Sacrament, the sacrifice of the Mass, and our call to live out our lives as missionary disciples of the Eucharist. This weekend, our gospel passage is from the Gospel of Luke, and it is the story of the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes. And this passage is a very Eucharistic passage. Our Lord is taking bread, he's lifting his eyes up to heaven, he's blessing it. But this passage shows God's ability to change nature, to multiply elements. If God has the ability to multiply elements, he has the ability to change elements. Just as at the miracle of the wedding feast at Cana where Jesus has the ability to turn water into wine, now he's showing his ability to multiply elements. These few fish and few loaves are able to feed a crowd of 5,000 men, not including women and children. He has power because he is the Almighty One. And so both of these miracles, the miracle of the wedding at Cana, the miracle of the multiplication of loaves and fishes, sets up for us a good and firm foundation about what will happen every time we have Holy Mass. Every time we have Holy Mass, we are gifted with a God who is able to change elements, who's able to multiply elements. And so we know with assurance that every single Mass Bread and wine are changed into his body and blood, and they feed the entire world. They give food to the whole entire world. Last weekend, some of you know, we had what was known as the Intense Youth Conference uh, at All Saints Parish, and it was a powerful, powerful opportunity of grace for so many young people. We had about 300 participants in this year's Intense Youth Conference. We would love to have more next year, so if you have cousins or nieces or nephews or grandchildren or children, uh, please know that we're going to have another intense youth conference next year. Next year, it's June 9th, 10th, and 11th. We bring in nationally known speakers, powerful music, and the entire weekend is focused on the Mass and on Eucharistic adoration, particularly geared towards young people. We have living stations of the cross. We have just great opportunities of game and fellowship. Uh, good food, and the young people camp in tents the entire time. That's why it has the name Intense Youth Conference. It's so funny. <laughs> but I wanted to just encourage you, it, it, it's so beautiful to see these young people excited about the Eucharist, to see them responding in adoration with tears, with joy, with excitement, because he truly is there, and they know that he is there. A great question for us as we enter into this Eucharistic revival is how do I personally come to know and love Jesus more in the Blessed Sacrament? How do I come to spend more time with him so that I can then bring him and share him with the world? I think we can clearly agree that our world is really, really broken right now. Our world needs Jesus and Jesus is present in the Most Blessed Sacrament. So there's no better way for us to bring Jesus with assurance than to bring people to the Eucharist, to bring people to adoration, to bring people to Mass. The Intense Youth Conference last weekend was a way for us to do that, but we should be doing this every single day. Bringing people to Jesus, bringing people to adoration, bringing people to Mass. So let's pray for that grace in a very beautiful way. Please note that there are discussion questions down below that we have for you. It's our hope and our great gift and grace would be for you to found a small group, invite some individuals to have a discussion. I know that many of you that are watching this right now are in a small group, and I'm thankful for that. Please encourage your family and friends to do the same. It's when Christians 
get together, talk together, share sacred, sacred scripture, and share their lives that we have more of an evangelical zeal, more of a desire to become saints. Thank you for joining us for a live today. Join us at allsaintscatholic.net for discussion questions and for more opportunities uh, to live your faith. God bless you.